now. How about them damn Celtics? It is our pleasure to once again welcome Ronnie 2K to the How About Them Celtics podcast to talk about the 2K Sim, the Celtics, uh, and just the team in general. Ronnie, how you doing? Thank you so much for coming back on the show. Always a pleasure. I'm I'm great. Uh, obviously, the the Sim really liked the Celtics. So I'm I'm glad <laughs> to get into it with you guys. Absolutely. So uh, NBA 2K's official Sim this year had the Celtics as back to back champions. Jason Tatum Finals MVP. Uh, them beating the Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals, a bunch of good stuff to hear for Celtics fans. Uh, so I- I'm most curious, just from your perspective, there hasn't been a repeat champion in six years since the Warriors did it. Why do you think 2K thinks the Celtics could be that team? And do you agree with the Sim that do you think the Celtics will be the repeat champs? I mean, uh, the Celtics have one thing that a lot of teams do not right now, which is depth uh, and championship medal, right? Like, I, and what's crazy about it is most teams that uh, have won one, you know, might want to sit on their laurels. Uh, I think the Celtics actually have a pretty big chip on their shoulders for a variety of reasons. Um, and so, like, I, you know, there, there's also a ton of motivation. I, I feel like the first few games of the season have shown uh, exactly how motivated they are. Uh, Jason's come out completely on fire. Um and so, yeah, Celtics fans have a lot to look forward to, but I, I think that's why the game likes it. Obviously, they have more depth. They're a really fun team to play in 2K. But, I, you know, from a intangible perspective, like the, all the reasons that you want to be motivated to try to defend a championship, I think the Celtics have. The, the funniest thing about 2K Sims to me is there are always – the teams that you don't necessarily expect to be deep into the playoffs. Like I remember for years, you would just have years and years of Atlanta Hawks NBA finals appearances. I'm actually kind of surprised that the Celtics didn't get, uh, I don't know if that's right in the way of the Hawks, in the way of the Hawks specifically. Uh, no, I, I don't know if that's completely accurate. Usually our sim actually has been pretty accurate, at least like the last five or six years since next gen for sure. Um, Maybe in yesteryear, uh, you know, we had some funny ones. But even I, I, I recall, like, I, I, you know what's funny is I used to run this in. Like, that was, like, part of my, my – Really? Purview, which obviously things have changed a lot. But um, I, I I always remembered sometimes when the Sim would spit out something after, you know, the numerous runnings of it. I'd be like, no way is this going to happen. Like, this is so ridiculous. And then it was always, like – at the end of the season, you're like, whoa, that actually sort of happened. Um, so I actually think that the Sim has done a really good job over the years um, in, in kind of telling the, the future. But that that's pretty funny about the Hawks, for sure. One one thing that's always like a staple in 2K Sims, especially like, let's say, three, four, five years ago, right before uh, a lot of the offensive stats became inflated as, you know, three-point attempts go up, whatever. There would always be guys, especially like a Luka, in a sim that just had these monster 30 point triple double averages. And here they are happening in real life. Do you guys think that the sim truly has like a crystal ball aspect to it where it's built to predict future trends in the NBA? I want to do a whole like case study on this actually, because 2k in general has had that, right? Like there's been some cases where like people are like, you know, there's no way that somebody could dribble like that or, um, you know, even even in the case of Wemby, right? Like we had seven five demigod builds, you know. In, yes. In and now that's literally what we have in the NBA. So it's not even like that kind of far fetched in a, in a crazy way. So I almost feel like two K has been a crystal ball to the future of the league, which is pretty kind of crazy to think about. So even if that, I guess that makes my point about the last one, which is even if the sim or the game is telling you something crazy like maybe it it just so happens to be that way i mean the 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 crazy uh scoring averages we were kind of ahead of that um and a lot of it had to do with the the you know um excessive use of the three-point ball uh and analytics and all of that but it's it's actually kind of foretold to be true I know in in my career back in the day, I'd always wanted like make it as tall as possible. And I think Wemby's taller than you could actually make your my players. At, he at is. Yeah. <laughs> he gets to that point. I, I, I wanted we to. Had, we had a seven five uh, ability to make a center 
for a couple years and it was just so cheesy that <laughs> we were like we got to pull this back so i think seven three is the uh, tallest that we have it might even be seven two this year yeah um, but all of a sudden it's like um we're gonna have to allow people to make wemby if Wemby is in the league, right? So guess that's so. gonna be an interesting one for us in the in the coming year. I wanted to ask you something about the ratings because two K has a million ratings for players. They have all these tendencies. They have all these, you know, everything from close shot three point to to like the ability to pull up from mid range. Do you think you're gonna need to create a new rating for Peyton Pritchard called the heave rating and, and put something in specifically for end of the quarter buzzer beaters, whether it be half court, full court, because. That's kind of like his thing now, and I'm curious I mean, if 2K's got a plan for it. There is a clutch mini rating. I'm pretty sure there is one. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, it's pretty crazy what what he's been doing when he's not, you know, playing against kids in in playgrounds. Uh, you know, <laughs> like that was so awesome, by the way. Peyton Pritchard, he, he said, talked about it yesterday. He said he likes to like sort of give a gut punch to the other team. Um, what what are your some of your favorite like specific ratings? Like obviously, like I said, there's there's a million ratings, but if you had to create your own rating for a player, it can be on the Celtics or not, like Peyton Pritchard Heaves is a good one. Like if you had to pick a player and say this is a very random thing that this very specific player is just randomly good at, what would be a rating you would give a player? No, in terms of uh trying to create a player with certain ratings, I, I really focus on a lot of the intangible things. Um, those are the kind of the ones that are are fun. So like all the IQ ratings, offensive and defensive awareness. Um, I think that those ratings are super underrated, especially when you're building a my player. Um, and so, like, I have always kind of skewed toward that kind of stuff because inevitably the mind overcomes the body in a lot of ways. And so, like, that's uh, – I've really had fun building my players that are heavy on that because you just don't see it very much with our, our community building uh, wow. physically tangible players. But – he, I'm, you know, you'll see it in the gameplay. Like you'll see uh, leaps and bounds on that. And so some of the, you know, the players that you don't think of as physical anomaly in in the NBA that have high 2K ratings, they actually kind of stand out in a big way. And so I think Peyton's a really good example of that. That is a, a great point with Pritchard Jack. Uh, one of the, one of my other favorite things that we learned about uh, specific NBA talents is we do on this show typically talk a lot about Andre Drummond being one of the great rebounders of all time is 2k going to put a function, especially for my career, if you're grinding for badges where you can intentionally miss layups so you can get more rebounds to get those badges. Is there a way to do that from you guys? Uh, I don't think that's something that's going to be a intended feature, but it is. I mean, people were talking about that with both Andre and with angel Reese with the WNBA, right? Like, you know, um, it, I guess it is it is a function. Um, it's it's pretty funny, but I don't think that the we are purposefully gonna let you do that. But I know that there are people that that stat pad that way in the game just by missing layups and having an advantage on offensive and defensive rebounding to go get a board right after a miss. Um, and then there's a couple batches that are you know like second chance, put back, all that stuff, where you could probably build a player to do that, but. It's not an intended feature by 2K at all. Oh man, uh, I can just picture somebody picking a Drummond build. You get, you get, you, you get your 2K my player. It says shades of Andre Drummond. Then you just start freaking, freaking. You know you're throws, getting 25 laps. boards. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna pile it wouldn't shock me though. The community loves to grind for badges, so if any any time they could find a way to get extra badge points, it, it would that would be a happen. unique way of doing it. That's for sure. Um, I noticed the the 2K sim didn't list a coach of the year. And and so that just made me want to ask you a Joe Missoula question. Uh, in the past, I think, four months, Joe Missoula has been on a generational run of quotes. Just the other day, he said he wished fighting could come back to the NBA because he's a psychopath and just decides to say what whatever about he the, wants. What about the one where he said when he kissed the court, he it tasted like yep. blood? I was like, that's, yeah. that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I wanted to ask you... In the past X amount of months, just just seeing it, do you have a favorite Joe Missoula quote? And do you think there will be anything in 2K that could represent his, you know, psychoticness, whatever, how you would phrase it? Do you think you'd have any animation? I mean, maybe we, maybe we should have him come and shoot some scenes for my career. I, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's been a, a revelation. And obviously it's resonating. And, uh, you know, I, talking to Jason about him, a bunch over the offseason, like it's it's definitely 
resonated with him and the and the you know multiple different egos on the on on the Celtics. And I don't mean ego in a negative way at all. I'm I mean just different personalities. Um, for him to be able to navigate all of that is is amazing. Uh, but I will say that um, I do think that my favorite quote is about about it being a blood sport and like you know that you're going to battle like it's it's it speaks to gladiator i'm sure he'll go watch gladiator too you know the opening night uh and be inspired by that film so i mean yeah what a what a character but the results are uh you know speak for themselves um you know there's some top level coaching going on in the nba in general and that's a that's really uh exciting i mean Obviously, JJ uh, and his exciting first week. Um, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of the guys that are operating some of the the teams that are at the top of the spots. Like, it's some high level coaching. I can't wait to see what what Pop does for Wemby and with Chris Paul in in year two for the Spurs as well. Did JT give you any specific uh, Joe Missoula anecdotes that? might have stuck out or um, nothing you can share anything that i can pull out uh but i do know that there's a tremendous amount of respect and uh um you know it, it really does seem like any of those celtics would would go to the ends of the earth for their coach um which is amazing because like you kind of forget that you know they had kind of a tumultuous uh coach exit uh, just a year and a half ago right and it's almost like been put in the rear view mirror. Championships do that, I guess. Um, but you know, like uh, he he has definitely demanded that locker room, and that's the one thing that I sort of got from talking to Jason about him. For sure, uh, we don't want to take up too much of your time, so I want to ask you one last question. The last time we talked, I believe we mentioned uh, some of the the most OP two K players in the last X amount of years. I think Gerald Green was brought up. So I'm curious if you had to run one of them we'll retired say, we'll yesterday, say, by the way. Yeah. Rudy Rudy Gay, Gay. Yeah. Legend. Um, I was going to say, if you had to pick three players to run park with in my park and they just were the most OP 2K cards, it can be just from my NBA it can be from, you know, uh, uh, my team. If you had to pick the most, the three most random OP 2K players over the year to run park with, who would you pick as your threes? I had two jump to my mind right away. And then I, the third one was such a battle, but uh, I think I told you the most OP player for me ever was 09 J.R. Smith, who mm. was better than Michael Jordan in his prime. Um, the pink diamond, uh, Christoph Sperzingis card uh, from, I think it was like four years ago, but mm. any pink diamond Christoph Sperzingis card in the past couple years are the, the highest rated one, obviously now Opal and, and uh, Dark Matter and, and whatnot. But the those are always just so much fun to play with. But that particular year that I'm thinking of, the first year we had a pink diamond Przingis was incredible. Um, and now, man, that third one's a battle. I mean, you, you mentioned Gerald Green. I'll give it to Rudy because... You know, maybe I'm feeling a little sentimental. Um, mm. He his playing as him uh, a couple of those first years in his career was was pretty extraordinary. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, like I said, don't want to take up too much of your time. So thank you very much, Ronnie, for joining us. Always on the show a pleasure. Today. Yeah, anytime. happy to talk Celtics. Happy to talk to you, Kate. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, guys.